Hello, my friends. Here we are at week number two of Napoleon Hill's Napoleon Hill's Year of Growing Rich, 52 Steps to Achieving Life's Rewards. Okay, and if you haven't picked up this book and you would like to, I suggest going to thriftbooks.com. You can probably find it there for probably less than $5, and that includes shipping. So let's get right to it. Week number two, learn how to live your own life. You will never find peace of mind by allowing other people to live your life for you. The most profound fact concerning humanity is this. The Creator gave us the complete, unchallengeable right of prerogative over one thing and only one thing, our own mind. It must have been the Creator's purpose to encourage us to live our own lives, to think our own thoughts without interference from others. Otherwise, we would not have been provided with such a clear dominion over our minds. Simply by exercising this, per, this profound prerogative over our own mind and life, you may lift yourself to great heights of achievement in any field of endeavor you choose. Exercising this prerogative is, on, is the only real approach to genius. A genius is simply one who has taken full possession of his own mind and directed it toward objectives of his own choosing without permitting outside influences to discourage or mislead him. We all know stories about famous people who turned adversity into advantage, who overcame great obstacles become, to become rich and famous. They are the successful people who converted stumbling blocks into stepping stones. They become the geniuses of industry, the Henry Fords, the, the Thomas Edisons, the Andrew Carnegies, and the Wilbur and Oliver Wrights. But there is a far greater number of lesser known mortals who refuse to accept defeat. They simply refuse to become one of the vast majority who do little more than eke out a living and experience mostly misery disappointment and failure. Many years ago, a young army veteran came to see me about a job. He told me he was disillusioned and discouraged. All he wanted out of life was a meal ticket, a place to sleep and enough to eat. He had a look in his eyes, a sort of glassy stare that told me he thought hope was dead. There was, <clears throat> here was a perfectly capable young man who was willing to settle for practically nothing when I knew very well that if he changed his attitude, he could earn a fortune. There was something about him, an almost hidden spark that prompted me to ask, how would you like to become a millionaire? Why settle for meager existence when you can just as easily settle for millions? Don't joke with me, he replied. I'm hungry and I need a job. I'm not making fun, I replied. I'm dead serious. You can earn millions if only... Are you willing to use the assets you now have? <clears throat> what do you mean assets, he explained. I have nothing but the clothes on my back. Gradually, over the course of our conversation, I learned that this young man had been a fuller brush salesman before he went into the army. While in the service, he had done considerable KP duty and had learned to cook rather well. In other words, besides the natural attributes of a healthy body and a potential, <clears throat> potentially positive mind, his total assets consisted of the fact that he could cook food and he could sell. Generally, generally, of course, neither selling nor cooking will propel a person into the ranks of millionaires. But this veteran took himself out of the ordinary walks of life. He was introduced to his own mind and the possibilities that existed when he took control of it. In the two hours I spent with this young man, I watched him change from a person lost in a sea of despair into a possibility thinker. He did it all with the strength of one idea. Why don't you use your selling abilities to, pers to persuade housewives to invite their neighbors over for a home-cooked dinner? then sell them all cookware. I advanced him enough money to buy some clothes and the first outfit of cooking utensils, then turned him loose. 
During his first week, he cleared nearly $100 selling aluminum cook cookware. The next week, he doubled that amount. Then he began to train other salespeople who worked for him selling the same cookware. At the end of four years, he was earning more than a million dollars a year and had set in motion a new selling plan that has since evolved into an industry in its own right. When the ties that bind a human mind are broken and a man is introduced to himself, the real self that has no limitations, I fancy that the gates of hell shake with fear and the bells of heaven ring with joy. So there you have it, week number two. And of course, you can tell this book was, uh, and these stories were written, you know, many, many years ago uh, by the fact of, uh, you know, what's a fuller br brush salesman? You know, what's fuller brush? Who sells brushes? And then the whole cookware thing. So it just shows you that, you know, even today, you can um, use your own mind and think creative, creatively, think out of the box and come up with ideas to make money. The internet is huge, has a huge potential and has actually produced many, many millionaires. So if you have internet access, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to figure out and come, out, come up with creative ways of earning money online. So that's week number two. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you again for week number three uh, next Monday.